and welcome. Today I'm doing a different type of review. This time it's on a guitar amplifier kit. It's a clone of the famous Marshall JCM 800, and it's made by the KLD Guitar Company that you can build for less than $300. And in case you were wondering, if you can see here, the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. 11, 11, 11, and 11. Hey, welcome back to Phaser Tech. My name's John. So, when it comes to guitar amplifiers, solid state amps and digital modelers have come a long way over the decades. But if you want the absolute best tone, tube amplifiers still reign supreme. Which is one reason why DIY kits have become increasingly popular recently. Earlier this year, I built one for myself and was very impressed with its sound. So I decided to do a review on this 25 watt clone of the famous Marshall JCM 800 amplifier that was popular in the 80s for hard rock and metal. The JCM is known for giving a massive high gain tone that's raw and in your face, but it can also do great cleans as well despite only being a single channel amp. So I'll start off by talking about my motivations for buying this kit and also talk about my experience I had building it, since there were a few issues with it, but nothing that couldn't be solved with a little extra effort. Then I'll go into the specs and features of this particular amp, and finally I'll play some more sound demos. There's a lot of details to go over, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, so if you'd rather skip that part and go straight to the sound demos, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's start by talking about the brand that makes these kits. KLD Guitars is a Chinese-based company that sells affordable guitar gear, and they offer a number of kits that are clones of some of the most iconic amps such as Fender, Marshall, Mesa, Matchless, and more. The reason why I bought this particular kit is because the two tube amps I currently own are both clean amps, one of which is a Fender Deluxe Reverb Reissue. It's a great sounding amp and an excellent pedal platform, but I also wanted to have a true high gain amp to get better overdrive and distortion tones. Originally, I was planning to build one from scratch and base it around schematics I found online. But then I came across these kits from KLD and decided to try one as my first build. My prior projects have mostly been with microcontrollers and low voltage circuits, so I figured it would be better to start with a kit. Also, this means I wouldn't need to spend so much time in the design process and shopping around for the correct components. Cost was also a factor since buying the transformers alone would already be approaching the cost of this kit. So it's actually a really great deal at only $160 for the kit and around $50 for the metal enclosure. The price of tubes can vary but I was able to find some for around $60 bucks used on eBay. That means the total cost for a real high gain tube amplifier came out to less than $300. That's a great deal if you don't mind getting your hands a little dirty and learning something in the process as well. Now there are two versions of this kit. The JCM25P is partially assembled and all the components are soldered on already, while the JCM25PC version requires you to do all the soldering yourself. This is what I bought since I wanted to do everything myself. Either way, you'll have to solder all the wires to the board, switches, and transformers. So I don't recommend this kit for someone who doesn't have any soldering experience. Also, keep in mind that tube amps contain potentially lethal voltages, so don't attempt this unless you know the risks and always remember to drain the caps before handling the circuit. Also, before powering on a custom tube amp for the first time, it's generally a good idea to use a current limiting device to make sure there's no shorts or major issues before plugging it straight into an outlet. I'll leave a link in the description to a good video that goes over how to build a simple current limiting device using a light bulb. It might not be as necessary with this kit if you're careful to follow the schematics and instructions exactly right, but it still might be a good idea. Now let's talk about the experience I had building this and issues I found with it. For the most part, the kit was pretty straightforward and what I expected it to be. The PCB is clearly labeled with not only the component values printed on it, but it also contains symbols of how the shielded wires and components should be orientated. 
It seems KLD made sure to make it as approachable as possible for people of all skill levels, and I applaud them for that. They also included several PDF documents with a variety of schematics that are easy to read. However, I did notice an error in how the output transformer wires were connected to the circuit in the schematic. It seems the specific model or source of the output transformer changed at some point because the schematic has the green and yellow wires labeled backwards compared to how the actual transformer was labeled. Each wire on the physical transformer came with a sticker label indicating its function, so I just followed the stickers instead of the schematic. Other than the green and yellow transformer wires being labeled backwards, the rest of the colored wires on the schematic were correct. But the biggest problem I encountered with this kit was actually a bit of a pain to deal with. The metal enclosure is pre-drilled with holes that you would expect to fit the PCB, but there are several holes that don't line up. In order to make it work, you either need to drill new holes in the metal enclosure, drill new holes in the PCB, or a combination of both like I did. I didn't actually drill new holes in the PCB, but rather extended the existing ones. And after drilling new holes in the enclosure, I was able to get the board mounted. Also, KLD did not provide enough hardware to screw in all the holes into the board, so I had to go out and get that myself. It wasn't too bad of an issue for me since I already had the tools and drills, but this could be a potential deal breaker for some. I really hope KLD is able to correct these issues because I found the kit to be well thought out for the most part, except for this glaring issue. I believe part of the reason for this is they're trying to make this single metal enclosure fit all of the different kits they sell. The enclosure has room for another tube that wasn't needed for this particular build, and it has two front potholes that weren't used as well. It seems a mistake was made when trying to accommodate for all of these different models. But I was still able to make it work, and after drilling new holes I took the enclosure outside to get a nice fiery orange paint job. Later this year I plan to fully complete this project by building a box around it, and adding a handle. So I'll be sure to do a video on that from start to finish. Unfortunately for this video I didn't record any footage until I was almost done soldering. But I also captured some footage of how I biased the power tubes. Since this is a push-pull design, it uses two power tubes in the output section, the particular tubes being 6L6GC. I bought a 5-pack of these used on eBay, so I had to spend some time finding the best matched pair. More expensive amplifiers will typically have a separate bias pot for each output tube, so it's possible to run tubes that aren't so well matched together in those. However, this design only has a single pot for biasing, so it requires the two tubes to be matched within a certain threshold to work. When two tubes are badly mismatched, you might see one of them glow a lot brighter than the other one, in which case you shouldn't keep it running for long or it might overheat. The three 12AX7 tubes in the preamp section do not need to be biased. Now for those who don't know, the point of biasing is to run the tubes at an optimal voltage. You want it high enough for them to perform their best, but not too high that their lifespan will degrade. KLD recommends 35 millivolts as a bias voltage for this model. That means when you measure the voltage across this power resistor here, it should measure 35 millivolts or close to it. That resistor corresponds to this tube. So we also need to measure this other resistor that corresponds to the other tube. You'll probably notice that they aren't perfectly matched, but that's okay. Mine measured about 35 millivolts on one and 32 millivolts on the other when measuring across the resistors. Now let's talk about the specs and features of the amp. Like the real Marshall JCM800, this clone only features a single channel and is well known for its lead input tone. But you'd be surprised to find that the low gain input has remarkably good and sparkly cleans as well, making it a fairly versatile amp. It would have helped if there was an easier way to switch between inputs though. When the lead input has a cable inserted, it automatically disables the low input because of the way the circuit was designed. So it's not possible to use an ABY pedal to switch between inputs unfortunately. It features all the controls as the real JCM including gain, EQ, presence, and master volume, and also has a standby switch on the front. On the back, there's the power switch and the typical speaker outputs in 16, 8, and 4 ohms. For those who like to record straight from an amp to a DI, there's also a line level output, which is a nice addition from the original. 
Another nice addition which I really like is the pentode triode switch that drastically cuts the output power giving it more versatility as a bedroom amp. Its maximum output is rated for up to 25 watts while the original JCM800 came in both 50 watts and 100 watt variants. I think KLD did a good job thinking about which features to add or change that would make it more usable for home and recording musicians, while also making it powerful enough to play on the stage with. Now let's hear some more sound demos. The speaker I'll be playing this through is a 12 inch Jensen mod series, and I'll start by playing some lead tones through the lead channel, followed by some crunchy rhythm tones, and finally some clean tones. I'll be playing it through this Gibson Les Paul Studio and also a Squire Stratocaster. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so you can get notified when new videos are released. I plan to do more videos soon on DIY guitar gear, including a guide on how to build your own pedals from scratch. So, thanks again. And, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. See you next time.